Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 19. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode, we're going to use the collision code we wrote last time to add collectibles to our game and we'll also add our first sound effect. First, let's take a quick look at what we did last time. Okay, so I'll just start by running the game and we can see that our entities now have these collision boxes attached to them, and when they touch each other, the collision boxes change color, and that's how we know uh, that our collision code is working. So if we just take a look at our room class inside of our update, um, this um, is worth remembering that the update is called sort of every time our game logic updates, we call down to our room update method. And in here, we now call the collision check method on all of our entities. And we do that by looping through every single entity, checking if it collides with the player, checking if the player collides with that entity, and then checking if the entity collides with every other entity inside of the room. And we do that by calling the collision check function. And if we check our entity class, we can see that collision check um, first of all, it just checks to make sure that we're not trying to see if an entity is colliding with itself, and if we aren't, um, it checks for a collision, and if there is a collision, it just changes the debug color of the entity, and that was just to test that our collisions were working. So in this episode, we're actually going to use this and you know put this to good use uh, by adding some collectibles to our game. So off camera, I've added um, just two things. So one thing is this um, magic potion sprite, which, uh, there we go, let's uh, zoom in so people can actually see it. So here we go, we have a nice um, magic potion sprite, and we also have a potion sound, which we want to play whenever the player picks up a potion. So I'll cover more about drawing sprites, um, and nicer sprites than this one. Um, in a later episode, and I'll also cover making sound effects in a later episode, but for now, these are here to just get us started. Okay, so let's um, go about adding a collectible. So we will start off by making a new folder inside of, let's just check, um, inside of source. New folder, and let's call this pickups. And inside of pickups, we're going to make a new file called potion.lua. So it should all be pretty familiar by now. We'll start by making a, um, let's actually call it magic potion in case we, uh, we have other potions later on. Um, we'll start by making an empty uh, table and we will finish off our module by returning that table. And we will also attach a create method to our table. So this is a function. And inside of here, we need an instance. And we want to return the instance that we create. Um, and I just said I would name it magic potion. So I'll just change the name magic underscore potion. There we go. And so this is going to be very similar to our slime.lua um, module. So the purpose of this is to use our entity class um, but give us something a bit more meaningful. So give us a slime because there's a lot of work involved in creating, in turning the entity class into a slime entity. So very similarly we're going to do all the work to turn the entity class into a potion entity inside of this file. So let's um, first of all require our entity code. Uh, so local entity equals require, and this is in source logic entity, I think. Let's check. Yes, source logic entity. So now we can say our instance is actually equal to entity.create. And let's remind ourselves what the entity class actually takes as arguments. So um, let's just find the create method on our entity class. 
it takes a sprite, an x, y and z location, some speed and a movement. So the first thing we need is a sprite. Local potion sprite equals, so we also need to require our sprite class. So sprite require, and this is in source graphics sprite. So if you've um, if you've dived in halfway through uh, the series, or if YouTube has sent you to the video or the wrong video, or the video is out of order, um, you can go back to the previous episodes where we cover off how um, all of the classes uh, in the game work so far. But this episode is more about using what we did in previous episodes, starting to capitalize on some of our hard work. So potion sprite. So let's go ahead and do sprite create, and let's just check what a sprite actually needs. Oops. Uh, source graphics sprite. Here we go. So a sprite just needs an image path. Nice and easy. So that will be in assets sprites potion dot png I believe let's just assets sprites oh magic potion dot png so let's pass in potion sprite to our entity uh, we need an x y and a z position so it would make sense if um, we took those as arguments, so we can create our potion where we want it. X pause, Y pause, and Z pause. We need a... what was the next one? A speed, which can just be zero, and finally we need a movement method, but our potion isn't going to move, so we'll just pass in nil. And just to be super clear, let's, instead of calling this inst, let's actually call it potion. Okay, so let's make use of this and um, add a potion to our rooms. So if we go into our map class, because our map class is currently responsible for creating new rooms. So somewhere in here, here we go, we have a create room method. And we can see that currently we create our um, we create our slimes. So let's add to here um, something to create our potions as well. So what we need to do is add the potion to the list of entities um, which we pass into the room when the room gets created. So down here where we create the room, we pass in a list of entities we want the room to contain. So we can use table.insert to add a new um, item to a table. And so if we call this on our entities table, and then we just pass in our potion, so magic potion dot create. Um, and this just needs an X, Y, and a Z position. So eyeballing it based on where our slimes are, let's try 150. 0, 100. So this should put it somewhere in the middle of the room uh, on the floor. And finally we just need to include our uh, potion, our magic potion module. So magic potion require source pickups magic potion. And let's just check I did the other requirements. Right, yes I did. I was worried I put dot .lure on the end, but I didn't. Cool. So now let's see what happens. Okay. Typo in map.lure. Yep, there we go. Bad argument number one to table insert, line 36. Another typo. Let's try again. Okay, so this is what I was expecting. So our entity class is um, is complaining because we gave um, our potions a movement uh, strategy of nil, but it's trying to call 
um, nil as if it were a method. So let's take a look at our entity class. And in the update method, we see that we do self.movement.update, but our potions don't have any movement. So um, let's code defensively here and say if self.movement, then update the movement. Otherwise, don't do anything. So this line will now only run if, um, if our entity has some movement attached to it. So now if we run the game, we see that we have a potion. And um, the good news is our potion already has a bounding box attached to it, uh, thanks to the code we wrote last time. So I can run over it as the player, and it will change color, but it won't do much else. So let's fix that next. So now we need to think about what we want our entities to do when a collision happens. Um, and the very similar to how we deal with our movement, or similarly rather, to use a correct English, to how we deal with our movement, uh, we can pass in a function when we create our entity to actually deal with what we want to happen on collisions. So let's just call this collision. And let's make sure we uh, attach it to the instance of our entity. Instance collision equals collision. Okay, so now um, in our collision check, as well as setting the debug color, we can also go ahead and just like with our movement, we can say if self dot collision, then self dot collision, um, except we want to pass in the entity here as well. So this is the entity that we're colliding with. And um, we want to make sure we call this with a uh, with a colon because it will be an instance method and we need a reference back to the entity which is calling it. And we'll finish off with an end. So if um, the entity which is uh, being collided with has a collision method, then we want to call it and pass in the entity that's colliding with it. And it would also be useful if we passed in our game object as well. So or our game state object. So this contains a whole load of extra information like who the player is um, and all of that stuff. So let's also just thread this through as well. So this means inside of our room class when we update when we update our collisions we just need to pass in our game object as the second argument. And we can do this because we already have we already pass the game object into our update method. So let's just make sure that we always pass this um, always pass this in. So now let's run our game and just check that nothing breaks when we uh, collide and it doesn't. Okay, so now we can go into our potion. And when we create our potion, uh, by the way, nothing broke because if you miss out an argument or if you miss an argument off of the end in Lua, um, it just counts as nil. So this is the same as saying uh, this. Basically, all of our entities of moment have a collision method equal to nil, so it just won't get called. Uh, but what we want to do now is say inside of our potion method or inside of our potion module, local collision equals function and we know that we're going to take self as the first argument because it's an instance method we know the second argument is going to be the entity we collided with and the final argument is going to be the game so all of our collision methods will need to look something like this and for our potion let's say if the entity we collided with is the player so if uh, entity equals game.player, then we want to do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, let's start by actually playing a sound as we're here. So audio in uh, Love or Love2D is nice and easy. Um, just like the graphics, we have a couple of helper methods we can use. And just like the graphics, we need to start out by creating um, an audio file to play. So just like we create a sprite to draw, we need to create some audio to play. So the way we're going to do this is love, or first of all, we should call it something. So let's call this uh, potion sound, love.audio.newSource. 
and then we just pass in the file name which is assets sounds potion let's see potion plink dot wave and finally it asks for a type and what the type means is or the type tells love2d whether it should load the sound into the memory or whether it should try and stream the sound from the file and the difference in those two things is if you load a sound into memory it's available slightly faster um, and there won't be any delays as it tries to play but the cost is you're loading the entire file into memory. So if this is um, a soundtrack, for example, you don't want to load a great big soundtrack file into memory because um, you're going to run out of memory. Uh, but for this, because it's a very small file, it's a short sound, it's okay to say static. And what, this, what static means is it will load it into memory, so it will immediately be able to play. But we'll cover this in more detail when we uh, do an episode on soundtracks and chip tunes and uh, all of that stuff. So for now we're just going to load in our potion sound like so and then on the collision we can just go ahead and say potion oops, potion sound colon play. So let's uh, give this a go. Nope, nothing happened, and that is because we also need to pass in our collision method to our potion, or to our entity when we create the potion. Now, hopefully... Excellent! So, currently the, uh, the potion doesn't get picked up, so it just keeps playing the sound. But it does play the sound, which is pretty positive. So now let's deal with um, getting rid of a potion after it's been picked up. So what we'll do is, after the um, sound has been played, we want to say self... Uh, we actually want to call self done. Uh, and what this will do is, um, well, we haven't written the method yet, but what we want the method to do is to do any tidying up when an entity dies, and then, or is finished with, and then we want to mark the entity as being finished with, so that our update code can come in and safely remove that entity for us, so it no longer takes part in our game. So let's write our self done method, or our done method on our entity. So down here we'll say local done is a function, takes uh, self and that's pretty much it for now, and we'll go ahead and say self.done equals true. So eventually we'll probably want to pass this function into our entities when we create them, just like our movement and our collision functions, but we don't need to do that at the moment, because just because there's no need to. So for now we'll just create it here. We'll make sure we add it um, to our instance as well. Dot .done equals done. And now inside of our room class, when we update all of our entities, uh, what we need to do is actually the first thing we will do before we update the entity. So the very first thing is if our entity is done, then we actually want to remove it from the list of entities. So the way we do that is we can use table.remove, which is sort of the opposite of uh, the table.insert method we were using before. So in order to uh, use table.remove, what you need is the list, which will be room.entities. Table.remove room entities and also the index of the entity inside of the table you want to remove it from. And we already have this, that's uh, this um, variable here, we're just not using it. So let's rename this to i for index and we can pass it in here. And the final thing we, uh, we want to do is to break. So 
once an entity has been removed, we no longer need to continue updating for that entity. Uh, so break will just cause our for loop to carry on from uh, the next the next entity in the list. Okay, let's give it a go. Oops, bad argument number one, expected table got nil. Let's just check. Ah, sorry, self.entities, not room.entities, self.entities. Oops, uh, so something that clearly went wrong there. Ah, of course. Um, so this is because done. we've named the variable and the method the same thing, and uh, methods in Lua are truthy. So when we say if entity.done, we're actually saying if the entity has the done method, which all of our entities do. So uh, let's fix this. So we'll call it self.finished. instead and it's just good practice to uh, set set it here as well finished equals false and then inside of our room class we need to check for self dot finished isnt a nil value okay that's just a typo inst there we go okay moment of truth great so um, now our potion disappears after we've collided with it great let's finish up by adding a few more potions to um, to our room just for fun so this will be in map actually so um, in map, let's just do for i equals one to uh, let's say five do and and we will just uh, add let's do i times ten here. So now when we uh, actually let's also just so we can enjoy it um, as much as possible. Let's jump into our main class and let's turn off debug mode. So now when we run our game, we can uh, run in and collect a line of potions from every room, which currently don't do anything, uh, but they do play a nice sound. Great, thanks very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series. I'm going to wrap it up here for now. Please like and subscribe if you've got a couple of seconds. That does help me out a great deal. And I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.